How do we take real steps to make sure our multicultural communities are able to feel safer, more included and engaged? Ticket Talk starts right now. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Ticket Talks. Together with Polaron Language Services, we are looking to use language to connect communities. And of course, whilst Polaron is the sponsor of today's segment, all the views and opinions in the following program are of course our own. I would also like to acknowledge that this segment is being held on the traditional lands of the Wawanjiri Woiwurrung people. And I pay my respects to elders both past, present and future. And I am lucky enough to be joined in studio by the director of Polaron Language Services, Eva Hussein. Welcome back. Hello, Mike. Now, what's been happening at Polaron this week? You've always got something big going on. Yes, and this this time it's really big, and I'm very excited. I'm very excited to be announcing Polaron's sponsorship of FECA conference. FECA stands for Federation of Ethnic uh, Communities Council of um, Australia, and it's a big body, and we'll be able to hear about them uh, a little bit more shortly. Uh, but I'm excited because it is very likely to be a face-to-face -face conference in March uh, of next year. So we are uh, just blown away by the ability to meet people as we did a couple of years ago. Fantastic. And it should be a bit of a game changer when it comes to interacting with people once yeah. again. So that's exciting news. What about miscommunication of the week? What have you seen out there that's been maybe gotten a little bit wrong? Okay, lost so in we're, translation. We're, we're picking on Google Translate again. Uh, I'm sorry, Google Translate, <laughs> but you, you do need to do better. Um, so this um, is rarely documented, but a couple of times in America, in recent times, there have been court cases about consent. So in this uh, particular instance, a police um, officer has stopped a, a person and uh, using Google Translate um, requested consent to search the car. It was thrown out of the court. Mm. So... Um, if anyone wants to use Google Translate for things that are um, such as consent, don't do it. It's yeah, fine. right. The legal ramifications right. of uh, using Google Translate, not quite there yet. No, no. It's good for some things, but not for others. Maybe for ordering a coffee or something yeah, in another country. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, guys, let's bring in our guest for today. And of course, the FECA 2022 conference has revealed its theme, which is Advancing Multicultural Australia. And it's being held in March next year, right here in Melbourne, which is fantastic. It is the premier conference on multiculturalism, diversity, inclusion, and migration as well. The conference will host multicultural communities, policy makers, service providers, academics, and many more over two big days of interesting presentations. So let's bring in our guests for today and Mohammed al Kafaji from FECA and Eddie McAuliffe from EWCV have been busy preparing for the conference. How are you both? Good, thank you. Now, Mohammed, Mohammed, I'll start with you. You became FECA's CEO recently. It must have been quite a challenge during the pandemic. My hat goes off to you. But what is the role of FECA and how, is it how has it evolved the last two years or so? Yeah, look, um, I became the CEO of FECA um, in late 2018, actually. But yes, it does feel uh, you know, quite new um, because there, is, there are so many challenges uh, facing our multicultural and ethnic communities. Um, you know, we advocate on access and equity needs for our communities because uh, we're very proud of our multicultural nation. Um, and for that uh, success to thrive, we need to acknowledge that some people in our communities need a little bit more help than others. And that's the equity piece. So what we do is show leadership and we, we provide advocacy uh, to ensure that multicultural communities um, live a successful life and thriving life uh, lives here in Australia. And as Eva mentioned, you guys are coming to Melbourne. Uh, what will be the focus of the event this year, Mohammed? Well, look, I think um, the past 18 months to two years has really been challenging for everybody. And um, I think people are really uh, wanting to get back together um, as a sector, the multicultural sector, and really kind of share some lessons learned from this pandemic. I know it's been a terrible uh, you know, 18 months, but there are um, few opportunities that have been presented by this and there are a lot of um, lessons to be learned. So everybody's really excited to come together and share their learning experience and, and also to you know, continue uh, advocating for multicultural communities um, to be part of finding solutions going forward. Mm -hmm. It'll be great to see people bringing all of their experiences together to sort of find those solutions as well. And again, in-person is such a bonus. Eddie, over to you. The EWCV uh, is a peak body committed to empowering Victorians from culturally diverse backgrounds. What are some of the topics that the conference will cover? 
Well, certainly COVID-19 will be one of the key items, of course, and multiculturalism itself will be put under the microscope and uh, the recovery coming out of the, the pandemic and the opportunities within that recovery uh, aspect will be talked about a lot. Also, the challenges of uh, refugees, uh, uh, you know, bringing, bringing uh, bringing uh, new uh, people into Australia, re renewing our migration, so on, and giving those uh, multicultural community, especially the new and emerging communities, the opportunity to develop their potential within the current environment. Eddie, what have been some of the major challenges that you guys have faced when trying to bring that sort of uh, solution to the table and encourage people to get involved? Well, it's the historical uh, position of racism but, uh, and disadvantage and uh, uh, insensitive uh, attitudes towards uh, new and emerging communities trying to integrate uh, within the current environment and having sort of uh, some, uh, how shall I say, attacks uh, from various aspects, both national and international and statewide and some of the extreme right wings and dealing with some of the uh, nonsense that's been on uh, been on the uh, digital media. Uh, they've had to deal with that and picking up uh, vaccination, uh, vaccine hesitation. Uh, those sort of issues have been a real challenge and getting that message through to those communities has been quite a struggle. But I think we've been, uh, how shall I say, we've been working through that in a constructive and effective way. And that's the whole thing is being constructive about sort of a bad situation. Mohammed, same question to you. Some of the challenges that you might have seen and faced. Look, what we've found is that um, uh, I think we need uh, a more um, effective relationship between government and communities, because when things like this happen, for example, the pandemic, we rely heavily on community leaders and the, the grassroots communities to to come together and um, uh, be the trusted voice between government and their communities. So we really need to invest in our communities going forward. Um, and I think the pandemic has made that case very clear. And we need to ensure that we build that trust and we, we, we work with those communities to um, you know, build their capability moving forward and also uh, giving them the resources that they need to, to be able to train the next generation of community leaders and, um, you know, uh, uh, and also community members who, um, you know, are willing to, to do more and they want to give back to the community. They just don't know how or they don't have the resources um, because, you know, we've seen, you know, like Eddie spoke about the um, effects of racism um, are part of the barriers for accessing um, some of these government services, but also, um, you know, not being able to um, have uh, adequate training and mm. uh, kind of that relationship with, with key stakeholders. Yeah. Speaking of resources, Polaron is a major sponsor of the conference. Why is it important, do you think, Mohammed, to have language services um, and companies such as them on board when it comes to these major conversations, especially regarding multicultural Aussies? Look, we're really thrilled that uh, Polaron are uh, one of our major sponsors. We're, um, it's very uh, important for us and we thank them for their generous sponsorship. Uh, these conferences don't happen without um, uh, organizations like Polaron and our wonderful sponsors because, um, you know, every cent of uh, you, any funding that we get will go to um, equipping the communities uh, themselves to be able to provide scholarship for community members to attend the conference, for younger people, for new and emerging communities to share their experiences and to have new voices in these forums. Um, you know, the past 18 months has been a um, really a strange, uh, you know, few months because we've seen some really bad translations come out of, um, you know, governments and, uh, you know, then, uh, and I guess the, the whole translation sector is really under scrutiny at the moment and under the microscope to see how, how did that actually happen? How do we, how do we, you know, how can we say that we're a successful multicultural nation when we have two languages mixed up in one translation or, you know, yeah. typesetting is back to front. So, that's the you know and people feel like um you know this is a tokenistic approach to multiculturalism which has now been uncovered i think and we really need to you know our language service providers to step up and um you know uh, improve the sector and i think everybody's willing to and polaron are one of the um i guess uh, yeah, more leading kind of uh, service providers who have very rigorous processes in place to ensure that 
um, slip ups like that don't that's, happen. So we that's really definitely look yeah, that's definitely what I've found, especially with Eva bringing in those miscommunications e each week. But uh, Eddie, I'll just go over to you. And of course, we've got Melbourne being the focal point of the event. Um, what would you want to say to locals to get involved? You're encouraging people to come along and get in the door. What about people who are a little bit further out as well? Can I just respond to a little bit to the last question? Of course. I see multicultural communities being used uh, productively and effectively rather than abused. And I think Polar On, and uh, with, with its interpreting services, uh, needs to develop a very effective line of communication to get through to those communities. Uh, I think that's an important aspect. So I think uh, Polar On has a key role in that aspect to develop those uh, communication packages that uh, get through to the multicultural communities. Now, your question is... Uh, can We're encouraging locals, people to come encouraging along. Encouraging locals. I don't think you'll have a problem. Uh, Melbourne has its uh, multicultural, uh, the Premier's multicultural dinner, which cuts off as oversubscribed around about 17 or 1800 uh, tickets and when they shut, shut it off. So it is the, I think, the multicultural capital uh, of, of Australia and the world. I think Fantastic. so. You won't have any trouble getting uh, Victorians to attend. It's a matter of. Uh, uh, getting the message out and getting a proper program that makes that uh, conference effective in Eddie, uh, developing the lesson. Eddie, it's going to be an exciting one. And Mohammed, I want to thank you both for joining us on the program today. Thank you so much for your time and good luck with it all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Easy done. Eva, another great show and another great group of yeah. uh, people coming on board to talk a little bit about it. But uh, that's it for today's episode of Ticket Talks. And of course, guys, if you have any questions about how to reach your multicultural audience, please get in touch with the team over at Polaron. As you've heard, they know their stuff. And the contact details are, of course, on the screen. I'm Mike Loder, Eva Hussein from Polaron. Uh, that's Ticket Talks for today, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Stay safe. Ticker gets crypto. Hello, welcome back into Ticker Crypto. From apps to fast transactions. Yeah, Bitcoin is uh, a candidate for that. The sudden moves. I'm interested in Bitcoin for what it represents to humanity. The crypto newsmakers. It's almost always human error. From privacy to security.